If NFTs are only about gambling and speculation on JPEGs, then why are we seeing the largest corporations in the world adopt this technology? Corporations like Google, Intel, Visa, Verizon, and on and on and on. Basically all of the corporations. Well, it's because of NFT 2.0 or smart NFTs. They bring true utility and are going to transform the web. And so today we are going to do a deep dive because it's important for all of us to understand this technology and understand the protocol that enables smart NFTs to be a thing. Let's dive in. We missed that first wave of speculators of just putting artwork on the blockchain and lots of people speculating on it because we really built utility and we were going after large brands that wanted to use these tokens as a new way to communicate versus putting their brand IP out there and hoping it would get bid up and people would make a lot of money on that secondary market. And now that frothiness, that window is kind of closed. NFT 2.0 is going to be all about utility. And that's when Block V and our token V will shine because we're talking to the largest brands and companies in the world because now they need an enterprise-grade platform that has a super robust wallet and a super robust ability to, to create these highly programmable, <clears throat> excuse me, these highly programmable smart NFTs. Um, and we have the ability to deliver that on a global level and pass all of their due diligence on the legal side and the technical side. That was Reeve Collins, the inventor of Tether and the co-inventor of the NFT, explaining how NFT 1.0, the gambling speculation hype that we just saw, is over. And now the corporations are moving in and adopting NFT 2.0. So... Let's check out this graphic here, which really explains the structural components of the smart NFT and what makes it so special. First, these smart NFTs are programmable, just like an app. So you can program them to do anything. We'll start with artificial intelligence. So these digital objects are like an envelope and you can put anything you want inside. So. ChatGPT, for example, you could create any NFT you want. Let's call it a, it's a, it's a pink unicorn. And you could plug ChatGPT brain inside of this NFT, which is pretty, pretty damn cool, especially when we think about personal assistants, which in my opinion are going to be the number one use case for AI. Everybody's going to have an AI personal assistant. And now Thanks to Block V protocol, it enables that AI personal assistant to go inside of an NFT so it becomes scarce, like a one of one, and it can seamlessly transition from AR, VR, and back to your phone, just regular 2D. Imagine Siri coming to life. I bet you she's pretty attractive, or whatever you, whatever body you want to put Siri in. Essentially, in the future, you're going to be able to do that uh, via smart NFTs. Also, if you see here, it says network aware. So these smart NFTs have a listener to the internet and they can change state based on something that happens. So let's say, for example, you have a um, Lakers ticket and this Lakers ticket is an NFT. Well, if the Lakers score over 100 points, that NFT can it has a listener to the internet and now it can change state and become a free bag of popcorn on your next trip. Okay. Um, you could make an, a smart NFT of, a, of a, a plant and you have to go water it every day. And once you water it for 50 days, it starts sprouting coffee cups and you can take that coffee cup. Now this is where it really gets cool. You can take that coffee cup that spit out of the original NFT and now it's a second NFT and you can take that to Starbucks, redeem it, boom, you know, uh, the possibilities are endless. The only possi The only limits are the limits of the imagination of the creators or the programmers of these smart NFTs. I hope things are starting to click. Think about how much different this all is to a JPEG image of a monkey, okay? Which is just what we saw. Though that was all about gambling and speculation, and then they added some utility on the back end. But these smart NFTs are what the corporations are interested in. 
um, because you're also gathering all the data in real time. We'll get to that in a second. So third, it says redeemable. I just kind of explained that. You could take an NFT, you could bring it in, you could they could scan it and you get a coffee cup or whatever you want to do. They're combinable. So let's say you have uh, two NFTs. One's a key, one's a box. You can find the key. And then you have to go find the box, put the two NFTs together. Boom, a third one pops out of the box. Maybe it's a, uh, a pretzel. Okay, so they're combinable. They're programmable. We've talked about that. They're traceable. This is what's really cool for especially the companies who are going to be utilizing these NFTs because they get all the data in real time, where you picked it up, where you redeemed it, who you sent it to, um, all of that data, immutable, 100% real, in real time. Uh, data is everything. Possessable, right? Because it's on the blockchain, these things are scarce. If I have it, you can't have it if it's a one of one. It can only be in one place at one time. So that, en that enables digital objects to now be possessable in the same way physical items are possessable. Transferable. They're going to be easily sent. No more of this MetaMask, ah, I've got to pay gas fees, all this crazy stuff. You'll be able to text uh, your NFT to your friend. Let's say Coke gives you an NFT and it says, hey, if you send this to 10 people and someone else redeems it, then you get a free one. Right. So, boom, I can just go to my phone, boom, 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 text it out to my friends and uh, hopefully one of one of them buys one. Then I then I win. And then now the company is seeing all that in real time. It's decentralizing marketing. It's decentralizing uh, advertising and loyalty. Authentic. So this is kind of a nature of the blockchain. Um, you know, it's real. Everything's traced and tracked. So, you know exactly where it came from, who it came from, how it came from them. Finite, we've talked about this. Uh, yeah, Scarce ability, scarcity uh, gets introduced to digital objects. So now you can have one to one, you can have one of a hundred, you can uh, make digital objects scarce, which therefore increases the value in some cases. Um, and essentially, all of this together enables some really cool things that all of the corporations are now looking at, actually have been looking at for quite a while. I've been doing campaigns and trials and tests for years utilizing the Block V platform. And from what we're seeing, it looks like this stuff is about to get pushed to the mainstream. Yeah, it's the programmability. So we have a platform that really makes it easy for creators to program their nfts where they can do lots of things ar vr they're event aware they'll change state based on different events that take place because they have a listener to the internet um if you share them they'll change state or if you share one and someone that in your downline activates it yours changes state so it's really just this ability to program each one of those objects like an app so it's a little container that, that you can program and whatever type of marketing um, activation or gaming type activation you want to do can be programmed into that NFT. So it really enables all the utility that's coming. Um, it, it's, we have the platform built already to provide that. I hope everybody here has learned something valuable. Leave your comments below. Are NFTs dead or are these corporations that are moving in going to be successful in their application of NFT 2.0. And if you're new to Block V, which is the protocol that is powering these new NFTs, then go to our channel, first of all, subscribe, and then go to our channel playlist section. And we have a Block V playlist section there for you guys, over an hour of content, about 12 videos, so you guys can learn about this little known protocol that is about to take over. See you on the next video. Peace.